Okay, we're going to take a look at uh, two Civil War battle games that came out um, Antietam in 1993 and Hell Before Night, the Battle of Shiloh in 1997. And this will be a brief kind of looking at the pieces kind of a thing. We're not going to go through a playthrough or anything like that right now. And it's not a review or any kind of in-depth analysis. I just picked these up lately and I thought uh, I'd make a few comments on them. Now, um, some people might be curious as to why am I buying these uh, kind of older titles. Um, well, a couple of reasons. One, I'd, I had never played these before. I am interested in the Civil War. And um, the other reason has to do with the state of the hobby, kind of. Right now, in the hobby, there are Civil War games out, but there isn't a lot of them that can be played um, on your kind of dining room table. A lot of the games, let's say from the gamers, are big mappers. Several maps, and they, um, they're quite large. So we're going to take a look briefly at these, the maps and the counters, and uh, see what these games uh, have to offer. Now I'll take a look at Antietam first, only because it uh, came out first. So these are games produced by a command magazine, and these are the magazine issue games. Uh, usually you get the magazine, some nice articles. You've got your game supplement, the rules, of course the uh, map, and uh, the counters. But uh, let's take a look at the rules first of all, generally. Um, I did like the way the rules are written in the command magazines. They were quite clear and uh, easy to follow. You can see order of battle there. Um, there was lots of illustrations. Um, three columns for reading the rules and they both faced the appropriate sections. Again, there's some good examples of play. So I've always found the command magazines uh, rules quite easy to follow. And there's your combat charts and stuff like that. So, for rules, uh, I'm kind of impressed with the way Command Magazine does their rules. And of course, if you bought the magazine too, you've got, you know, colorful articles. Here's some great uh, maps on the Battle of Antietam. So, counters. Now the counters, for their time, were the larger ones. That's coming more in vogue now. I guess these are, I haven't measured them, but they're probably 5 eighths inch. I'll try to get a little bit closer if I can to show you uh, the quality of them. Okay, I can't get much closer than that without getting them really blurry. But they're quite attractive counters. You can see the uh, Union troops there, in the light blue with the bands indicating, I'm guessing, the uh, brigades or the uh, divisions. And the Confederates are over here. Sort of a butternut color. And uh, they look fairly well done. Um, they seem to be regimental units. And I can see the division commander's name uh, there, DHL for example, or Jackson, DR Jones. The Union would have the divisions numbered. Yes, that's correct. But uh, let's take a look at the map now. Okay, there's a general view of the map. For any of you who are familiar with the Battle of Antietam, you'll recognize the town of Sharpsburg down here, and of course Antietam Creek winding to the north. McClellan's men coming from the east, and Lee's men setting up in a north-south line down this way. And uh, the map is not, um, there wasn't a lot of features at the Battle of Antietam. It wasn't uh, large hills or anything like that. Um, if any of you have a chance to visit the battlefield uh, today, it's quite uh, well preserved actually. So let's uh, zoom in on various sections of the map. Okay, <clears throat> for those of you that are familiar with the battle, you probably know that Hooker's first corps set up in this vicinity in the North Woods and part of Stuart's Confederate cavalry was here on Nicodemus Hill with artillery enfilading Hooker's Corps as they advanced south. There you have the Nicodemus House and the Miller, famous Miller uh, House and the Miller Cornfield just down here. So the Union troops advanced down. 
the Hagerstown Road and the battle proper began in this vicinity very early in the morning. There you have the um, famous West Woods and the little Dunker Church here. I believe that's the Smoketown Road here. And uh, over to the right, the East Woods. You've got the Muma Farmhouse here. And you've got some high ground where the Confederates placed some of their artillery. Now, moving down south a little bit, we've got the famous Sunken Road here. That's where D.H. Hill's division uh, set up. And then there's cornfields here. Now we'll go back up to the Antietam here. The um, Pry House is here. That's where McClellan's headquarters were. That, of course, is Antietam Creek. I don't see the um, upper bridge marked, which is a little strange to me. It should be up here. That's where uh, many of the Union Corps cross the Antietam to get into position. So maybe in the, in the game it doesn't make any difference. I suspect uh, the first car already sets up. Probably does over here. Yeah, there's little marks show where it sets up. And I see the uh, 12th Corps sets up here. But I do know that some of the reinforcing units cross the Antietam from this side of the uh, of the Antietam, so I'm not sure why that's missing, and I don't know yet uh, know the effect of uh, creeks yet. So that's a little curiosity. Now moving down, you've got the uh, Middle Bridge, which should have been a focal point of the battle from McClellan's point of view, but um, for some reason wasn't. Um, you can see the where the Fifth Corps sets up. That's Porter's Corps. And if we follow the middle bridge, we'll follow it into the town of Sharpsburg. There we go. Now these headquarters, I remember, were just outside of Sharpsburg around here or so. You can see there isn't a lot of terrain features. There's not a lot of hills or protective ground. Now there's a little bit of a ridge here. And these are more cornfields. Now we'll go here to the famous, what we call today, the um, Burnside Bridge. It's the, actually the uh, Henry Rohrbach Bridge. And here, um, a couple of regiments under Toombs, a brigade, held up a whole corps of Burnsides here, buying for the Confederates precious time. Now I do know that there was Fords on the Antietam south of the Burnside Bridge. They're not marked either. Oh, no, pardon me, I can see a Ford here and one there. So they are there, Snavely's Ford, I guess. So that's a guide to the terrain of the Battle of Antietam. Uh, it looks like a, a functional map, if anything. It's not um, uh, state-of-the-art or a detailed topographical map, but I think for game purposes it'll probably serve. I can't tell you much more about the game since, of course, I haven't played it. Now, just perusing through the rules, I see that there is no uh, notorious McClellan rule. I'm used to those in Antietam games. So I'm curious to know how the uh, game is going to work that way. Because as we know, at the Battle of Antietam, Lee was heavily outnumbered with his back uh, to the Potomac River. In fact, he shouldn't have fought the Battle of Antietam at all. Um, so it, I think core commitment rules will probably handle that, but we'll see. I'd like to give this game some attention. I should um, uh, note the designer was Jonathan Southard and the map graphics are Mark Sarmanich. So um, I'll leave Antietam for now and we'll take a look at Shiloh, also by Command Magazine. Okay, Hell Before Night, the Battle of Shiloh, came out from Command Magazine about four years later and uh, it's designed by Chris Perello and the map is by Beth Cuman and uh, we're going to take a look at that game a little bit more closely um, but before I show you the map and the counters to uh, Shiloh I want to show you a historical map of Shiloh uh, and this is for a reason it's because when I first saw the board to Shiloh I was a little bit taken aback I'm so used to seeing Shiloh uh, 
maps done a certain way that this one caught me by surprise. But let's take a look at the uh, historical map of the Battle of Shiloh first. The one little odd thing about the Battle of Shiloh, for anyone who has studied it, is um, it's hard to get a good map on that battlefield. You can get good maps on Antietam and Gettysburg and many other battlefields. But for Shiloh, the um, topography is, uh, I don't know what it is. There, there just hasn't been as many good studies on the battlefield. Anyway, the maps that exist often show what we come to expect. The, the Tennessee River here, uh, Crump's Landing, where um, the Army of Ohio crossed and landed to reinforce Grant. We're used to seeing Owl Creek over here in the north and uh, Lick Creek here in the south. So as you probably all know, uh, Shiloh takes place in very forested terrain. The Confederates came from this direction and Grant's army were defending across this arc here. So his right flank was protected by Owl Creek his left flank was protected by Lick Creek, but he did have his back to the Tennessee. So that's what we've come to expect when we see a Shiloh map. And most of the games that I've seen usually feature Owl Creek, Lick Creek, and the Tennessee River. So when I saw the map for Hell Before Night, I was a little bit surprised. And uh, let's take a look at it now. Okay, before we take a closer look at the map, I'll say a few words about the rules again. Uh, the command magazine, uh, the edition I got, didn't have a magazine. This is the uh, what the game that sold separately. Uh, still got a nice color cover there, and the standard style of rules uh, writing that uh, we've come to expect with command magazine. Uh, here they've gone with two columns. Uh, the uh, rules are bold face. And um, I forgot why those little wee Omega signs were there. I remember when I first looked at it, I said, oh, that's a neat idea. Now I can't remember why they're there. Um, but the rules, when I read them a little while ago, are quite, quite clear. And I could find everything. I haven't tried the game yet, so I don't know how it plays. But um, the rules look fairly straightforward. And there's a, an order of battle and setup schedule. So... Uh, and of course the expanded turn sequence. So let's take a look, uh, an overall view of the map and uh, then some close-up views. Okay, the first thing that struck me when I um, unfolded the map was uh, where's the Tennessee River and where's Owl Creek and Lick Creek. It was kind of disconcerting. I almost, uh, I had trouble even deciding which way is north and south. Well. Uh, he's giving you the orientations here. We're now looking at the map north and south as we did with the uh, historical map. So, of course, the Tennessee River is off the uh, board here to the right. And um, this is kind of branches of Lick Creek down here. All right. And uh, Owl Creek branches are kind of up here. So the designers opted to knock out those features, especially the Tennessee River, and concentrate more on the ground where they fought. Now, um, I think this might be actually a good decision, because we all know that the Tennessee River is not playable in the game. In any game of Shiloh I've ever seen, the Tennessee River is only used for moving the two little gunboats, Lexington and Tyler, and as a crossing sp a spot for um, the Army of Ohio. But that can be handled just as well by these hexes here, uh, the road to Pittsburgh Landing. So uh, the designer made a design decision to uh, concentrate on the battle area proper. And another thing that caught me by surprise was having the Shiloh Church here so close to the edge of the board. I'm not used to that. And this isn't taking a backhanded uh, slap at the game. Uh, I haven't even tried it. But um, this might be a good in the end. You can see that the terrain uh, has captured the terrain fairly well. It's very forested. And only, in, uh, you know, occasionally do you see these fields, farmer fields, where the focus of the fighting was. You've got the famous peach orchard here. Uh, just an overall view to show you that it's a little bit different than you're used to. 
let's look at specifics, some closer areas of the map. Okay, for a Shiloh game, the uh, Confederates are going to start up very close to the Union troops, and I suspect that when we play the game, uh, fighting is going to occur almost immediately. Now here's the main road from Corinth. The Confederates came up here and struck Sherman's division uh, here at the Shiloh Church. Now the Purdy Road is over here. I don't think there was much action that direction because Confederates mainly came from here. Now let's go down to the East Corinth Road here where more Confederates no doubt will come in and as we follow up the road you see the creek on the right there and the Barnes Field and uh, the Sunken Road and the Peach Orchard now the Sunken Road looks a little funny to me for some reason um, I'll have to study that more, they show it here it does look a little strange to me and they've got the Hamburg Road here this is leading to the Bark Road. So the orientation of the map takes a bit of getting used to. I'm wondering if it should ultimately be sort of oriented that way. I'm not sure. Anyway, you come across this large field. That's the cloud field. Each of these fields, of course, is named after the farmer who owned the land. And um, we'll come up here to the critical part of the battlefield that matters the most, the road to... Uh, uh, Pittsburgh Landing itself. In most Shiloh games that is the objective itself, capturing the landing on the first day on April 6th. If the Confederates drive Grant to the landing and they're able to capture uh, Pittsburgh Landing, the battle uh, is usually assumed to be over because the Army of Ohio can't unite with Grant. Now up here we have the road to Savannah and uh, that's an important road because of the march of Lou Wallace's division. Lou Wallace's division was not very far from the battlefield and Grant called on him to move very early in the day. For some reason, still a bit of historical controversy about that, Lou Wallace was uh, delayed and didn't arrive till late in the afternoon. And this is the road by which he came. Now I know that there was another road he could have come by but somehow in the game it's it's not here but that's the important road I know in some Shiloh games the Confederates cut off that road they can actually prevent Lou Wallace from coming on so whether that's a factor in this game I, I don't know um, you can see your tables up there your force march table I see a bombardment table uh, a combat results table of course and uh, turning effects chart. And then there's this neat little uh, morass exit compass table. Um, there's some special rules for that and uh, I'll mention that when we take a look at the counters. Uh, Shiloh, as a lot of you know, is a two-day battle. The um, chance of, well, the big chance for the Confederates is to win it on the first day. I think if they even make it to a second day they don't have much of a chance because the uh, Army of the Ohio has reinforced Grant at that point. Grant can usually counterattack and take the ground back. So that's um, the map to the Battle of Shiloh. Now let's see if we can take a closer look at the units. Now after being spoiled on the uh, larger uh, Antietam units, it takes my eyes a bit of getting used to to go back to these small half-inch uh, counters. They look positively small to me today. Very small indeed. Now the uh, counters appear to be regimental with their brigade leaders uh, named also. You can see the leaders uh, have actual photographs of the leaders on them. You can see uh, Johnson there, Beauregard, uh, Bragg. I find the numbers on the counters very small even by today's standards. For example, this unit here, it's got what, one, two, three, four, five, five numbers, um, an identification, and a, there's a lot of information on that counter is what I'm getting at, and uh, the numbers are quite small. The Army of the, uh, the Union Army, of course, is in blue, and 
they have the Army of the Ohio up there in uh, in uh, green and there's some more units units here and these appear to be regimental with the uh, division commanders uh, names on them so um, there's not much more I can say about Shiloh let's take an overall look again so that's Shiloh, Hell Before Night, just looking at the pieces. And again, I want to drive home the fact why I'm sort of picking up these older games is because um, I want uh, some Civil War games that will fit on your uh, average dining room table. Uh, let's see if I get a better view here. Okay, there's, there's what I mean about um, space and uh, your table, things like that. It's a uh, one map game that uh, I can play maybe in a few hours as opposed to these gigantic multi-map things that have thousands of counters. So um, game designers, there's certainly a niche out there for Civil War games uh, that are one map. So that's uh, leaving Shiloh. Um, I did pick up another Civil War game and uh, maybe I'll do a looking at the pieces to that game too. I'm quite anxious to try Shiloh and Antietam and see how they play. And that's it.